Johannesburg, South Africa is one of those cities I just can't get enough of. I've been here multiple times and absolutely love it, as the energy of the city is extremely contagious and it has a variety of things to do. Well, I'm back. So let's see what we can get into this go around. As always, we're gonna be checking out things to do, including different attractions, nightlife, and my accommodations. So sit back as we explore Johannesburg, South Africa. For those that don't know, South Africa is at the bottom tip of mainland Africa. It's bordered by Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. Johannesburg, also known as the City of Gold, is the largest city in South Africa and also the business hub of the country. So, one place that I heard a lot about during past visits but never got a chance to go is the Four Ways Farmers Market on Sundays. And I'll tell you now, I've been missing out. It's almost like a super live festival that goes on every week. The Four Ways Farmers Market is open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. So people start very early and typically come dressed to impress. Everywhere you go while at the market, you're gonna see beautiful women, smell delicious food cooking, the drinks are definitely gonna be flowing, and people are just having an all around good time. There's a grassy area where people can just sit and listen to live music performers throughout the day. And these performers are actually legit singers. Now on the opposite side of the market, it's more adult friendly. This is where you're gonna find both couples and singles mingling, live DJs rotating through playing the latest hits, and bartenders whipping up your favorite adult beverages. Now, in between the section with the live music performers and the area with the DJ, there are a number of food vendors selling some mouthwatering food. I'm a bit of a foodie, so I just had to try multiple spots while I was here, and literally ate until I couldn't eat any more. There are also vendors selling clothing, art, jewelry, and many other items. The market is also right on the water, so it gives this place an all around laid back feel. Whenever I'm in Johannesburg, the Four Ways Market will always be a spot I visit. Now, like I said, the market closes at 7 p.m. So after having a few drinks at the market, people are ready to party. If you saw my last Johannesburg video, then you know my favorite place to party on a Sunday night is the restaurant and lounge Saint, located in Santon. I just love the vibe here. People are really here for a good time and aren't doing too much like at other places I've visited. The service and drinks are always on point and I always meet cool people when I'm here. On this particular night, the DJ was definitely doing his thing. I also tried some new spots I've never been to before, like Cocoon by Monarch. This club was a little on the small side, but it didn't get too crowded, which was good. Just like the Lounge Saint, the service here was great, and the club really had a good atmosphere. The last place I partied throughout the week was a place I didn't even expect, and that was News Cafe, located in the Rosebank area. I only came here for dinner, but they ended up having a DJ in the building who kept the crowd moving. They had line dances going and everything. That's one thing you can't deny when it comes to South Africans. They for sure know how to have a good time, which is one of the reasons why I just love visiting this country. Now, one thing I've never done while in South Africa is go see some wildlife. So during this visit, I decided to visit the Lion and Safari Park, located just outside the city. They have a lot of activities to do here, such as mountain biking, horseback riding, and quad bikes, and a couple nice restaurants just to name a few things. But their main attraction though is the Lions. The park has a few different lion prides across the property. The staff drive you through the reserve in a completely gated truck that brings you right up to the lions. They're mainly just laying around chilling, but if you're lucky, they may interact with you while you're in the truck or even climb on top. 
The park has many other animals for you to enjoy as well. So if you visit, you're sure to have a lot of fun. While at the safari park, I heard about an area nearby called Little Paris. So I decided to check it out. Here, you're gonna find a lot of cool little shops and restaurants. I was told that it gets packed here on the weekends. So if you're on a date or just looking for some alone time, coming here on the weekdays would be better. Now the highlight of Little Paris is their miniature Eiffel Tower. Little Paris for sure has a great feel and is a nice getaway from the hustle and bustle of the city. About a two minute walk from Little Paris is the Harpy Sport Aquarium. Here, you'll encounter an array of fascinating aquatic life. They have many different species of fish, different reptiles such as alligators, and even sea lions. From the lion park to Little Paris and the aquarium, I had a great day seeing a variety of different animals, as well as other unique things I wouldn't have expected to see here. Johannesburg also has a lot of good museums. Of course, during past visits, I've visited both the Apartheid and South African National Museum. But another museum just outside of the city that isn't talked about much is the Cradle of Humankind. I asked a bunch of people I met in Johannesburg about it and they had never heard of it. And when I called an Uber driver to take me, he had never heard of it either. But we took the chance and went anyway. When we pulled up to the parking lot, I was completely surprised. There was a street party going on in the parking lot with lots of vendors and performers, something that I definitely wasn't expecting. After getting some food, I made my way to the actual museum. One major thing that surprised me about this museum is that in 1999, it was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO and is home to the largest concentration of human ancestral remains anywhere in the world. Upon entering the museum, you're taken on a journey through the evolution of mankind. You're offered a guide who works purely off tips, and I'll tell you now, it's well worth it. So make sure you tip him well. They do an excellent job of telling you our story, showing you the different fossils and artifacts, and explaining the illustrations throughout the museum. Now the best part about the museum is the underground caves. The museum takes you on a boat ride through what it was like when humans were living in caves. My primary camera went out during this portion of the tour, but trust me, it's great. After the underground tour, the museum continues with many very cool exhibits before heading outdoors and wrapping things up. Towards the end, you get a chance to check out the views of the surrounding landscape, as well as views from the top of the museum. If you get a chance, you don't want to miss the cradle of mankind. Now during past visits to Johannesburg, I've always stayed at the Hilton Hotel in Santon. But this time, I decided to switch it up and stay at the Protea Hotel Fire and Ice property in the area of town called Melrose Arch. This was a nice little hotel, and at $120 per night, it's very affordable, especially when you compare it to other hotels in the Melrose Arch area. I stayed in their standard king room. It was a little small, and the shower wasn't separated from the rest of the room, which I'm not used to. But it was very cozy and had everything you would expect a four-star Marriott property to have. The property also had a restaurant and bar that served pretty good food, a gym in case you wanted to get a good workout in, and also a relaxing pool area. But the main reason I stayed at this hotel is again because it's in the Melrose Arch area of town that I've heard so much about. Melrose Arch is an area with lots of trendy boutiques you can shop at galleries and theaters you can enjoy, and much more. They also host a lot of family-friendly events that are held throughout the year. This is also a great place to have lunch, as they have a bunch of really nice restaurants and chic cafes. 
Because of its lively atmosphere and variety of entertainment options, Melrose Arch is a destination you should really consider while in Johannesburg. Now this is my second video on Johannesburg, and I haven't even scratched the surface when it comes to things to do. If you want me to continue exploring this city, let me know by hitting that like button. Or if you want me to check out other cities across Africa, let me know which ones down in the comment section. Johannesburg is always a good time, and so far, it's been one of my favorite cities to explore. I can't wait until my next visit. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.